Okay, so today I want to talk with you just a little bit about the opponent. When you are preaching about something, and for example, you say that faith without works is dead, so we're not saved by faith and faith alone, that it has to be with works. It has to be with action, deeds, whatever you want to call it. All three words are the same in Greek. And you say, you show them in the book of Jacob, a.k.a. James, that it says, faith without deeds is dead. That's it. And he goes on to make an argument about it. So it's not something that's taken out of context. When you quote that, you're not taking it out of context. When you say, it means faith requires action. Otherwise, faith is useless. It cannot save you. And they say, oh, well, what about Ephesians 2, 8 through 9? All that tells you, when they respond like that, all it tells you is that they are a pagan Christian. I'm serious. That is not some sort of you know, extreme slander or something like that, or some marketing meme or whatever you want to call it. No, it's the truth. It tells you they do not believe that this is the testimony of God. They don't believe that. No, they don't. Oh, they'll swear up and down they do, but they prove by their actions that they don't. And that is the problem, is that what they say they believe and they give mental assent to, they do not live out in action. And that's what they're saying. They're saying you can be saved by mental assent without living it out in your actions. They're saying that. That's what they're saying the gospel is. And so when you say, no, it's not, this testifies against you. This says that you must have actions that coincide with the mental assent, the agreement, the, the belief. In addition to that faith, you must have actions that prove that you really, genuinely believe it. Otherwise, you don't believe it. One package, it's all or nothing. And they will argue no. And the way that they argue with you proves that they don't believe this is the testimony of God. You're saying, Ron, how, is, how do you get that? Well, <laughs> when I look at something, I jump like two and three steps in advance. Immediately, I can see those steps. So let me walk you through it, okay? I say that we're not saved by faith alone. And they say, what do you mean? And I will give them a scripture. James, right? Real name is Jacob. But it's in their Bible, it'll be James, because they have the apostate Bibles who lied about the name. Every translator knows exactly what the name of that book is. Very first word in there says Jacob. There is no Greek word for James. There's only a Greek word for Jacob. And they will... They will put James in there every single time, even though they know 100% that they're lying when they do it. They're liars. So, verse 17 of chapter 2, I'll say, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Okay. So, and then I'll, I'll tell him down here, verse 20. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? And you can read all around it all you want. Because when I quote a verse and use it a certain way, it's according to the context. So you can read before and after all you want, and you will find out that it means exactly how I've used it. But I'll say that. I'll say, faith without works is dead. And I'll tell them, citation. And um, invariably, they will not try to explain that verse. They won't. They won't go, oh, well, what it really means is this. They won't. 
because they know that it means what I used it for. And so what they'll do is instead they will try to keep, keep me like going from verse to verse to verse to verse to verse. So you only have one of two ways of countering that. One is that at the beginning you say, listen, do you believe this is the testimony of God? I mean, do you really believe it? If they say yes, you say, then when I present a verse to you, do not counter by presenting another verse. Because otherwise you're saying you don't believe that verse that I gave you. You don't believe it's from God. If you believe it's from God, and it says that you're lying about what you believe, that what you believe is not true, then you've got to explain that verse before we move on to your verse. And I have no problem addressing your verses. I can, I can address them all day because every one of them that you use is out of context is wrong, and is wrong. And all I have to do is read a few verses before or after. That's all I have to do to counter yours. And I don't mind it, but you have to explain my verse. So you start out like that. When I present a verse, we do not move on until you explain my verse in light of what you are saying the gospel is. And so you get them on that. You say, otherwise, our conversation's ended at that point. If you respond to my verse by saying, well, what about, and give another verse, conversation's over. You can just plan on me walking away. Because I'm not going to talk to a pagan Christian. And you can use that term with them. And they'll say, oh, what? You say a pagan Christian. Someone who claims to be a Christian tries to show off that they're a Christian, but they really don't believe what's written here. Oh, I believe, I believe. Then prove it. Prove it by your actions. <clears throat> and if they say, whatever they say, either way, you got them. Because they believe faith without actions is able to save, right? And therefore, it's able to give truth, too. Faith without actions cannot give you truth. And so you say, you know, and, and they say, oh, yeah, 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 I will, I will. Then you say, well, if you agree with me that, oh, <laughs> that you believing in this has to be followed up by actions, otherwise it's useless, then I've already won the argument. <laughs> Faith without deeds is dead. Faith without actions is dead. Believing this is the testimony of God without acting like it is, is dead. It's useless. And if, if you say, if the person says, oh, well, I don't have to do that in order to believe that this is the testimony of God, I don't have to answer your scriptures. And you say, yeah, you do, actually. Because if you are claiming to understand this in order to understand the gospel, and I bring up a, a scripture and say, this scripture doesn't agree with what you say, you are, you are liable for answering it. Otherwise, you're a liar. If you don't answer it, you're a liar about what you say you believe. You don't really believe it. You have to act on it, otherwise you don't believe it. If you do not act on your faith, you are a liar. You know what verse I'm going to read you? <laughs> Should have it memorized by now. I'm turning here so that you can see me turning the pages. So that you know that I'm actually reading it on the page, okay? Revelation 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, that would be what they are. If they refuse to, to address your verse, you could then say, well, but that makes you cowardly. And they might protest, but there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It makes you a coward. And you can show them this and say the very first one listed here are the cowardly. Cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 
You want to be a liar? Then don't act on what you... If you want to be a liar, then don't act on what you believe. Just go around saying you believe it, but don't, don't live like it. Don't do anything. If you want a faith that can save you, you must act on it. All of your actions must reflect that you truly, in your heart, through and through, believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you do not, you will not be saved. God is looking for worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth. Truth is not a mental thing. Truth is demonstrated by action. Truth cannot be alone in your head. And don't throw the thief at the cross at me. <laughs> if you watched any of my videos, you'll know I've already won on that one. You can go watch The Thief on the Cross. I'll put it up there for you. Where the whole video is about The Thief on the Cross. And, and I put that to death. That excuse. Which is really, really, really offensive. You'll find out why by watching the video. Serious. It's extremely repugnant. Very offensive. And it should be to you too. When you hear... A Christian, someone calling themselves a Christian who has two legs, two arms, can walk about, has their tongue, has their eyes, has opportunities, and they're using the thief on the cross as an excuse why they don't have to do anything. And that thief on the cross had just become a Christian. He just became a Christian. And all he had was this. And he used it. He did everything he could before he died with what he had. He was a paraplegic. Yeah, he was a paraplegic. Jesus was too. When you're nailed to the cross, you're a paraplegic. You cannot use your legs or your arms. And you have no opportunities or mobilities. The only opportunity he had was when the other thief verbally assaulted Jesus, criticized him. That was his opportunity, and he, stu he stepped up, so to speak, with his tongue. So that's what you, you cannot tolerate these men and women who refuse to address a verse in the Bible. When you bring up a verse in the Bible and they want to jump to a what-if verse, tell them, oh, you just proved to me that you don't really believe this is God's testimony. And they'll be offended. And you wait for them to ask why. Or wait to hear them defend themselves on it. Say, no, you don't really believe that it's God's testimony. You just proved it to me. And they'll ask why at that point, maybe the second or third time. And you tell them, because if you really believed that this was God's testimony, and I brought this verse to you that proved that what you call the gospel is not right, and you don't address that verse and tell how it doesn't disprove what you say is a gospel, you don't really believe this is the testimony of God. You don't believe that verse was from God. Otherwise, you'd explain how that fits in with what you're saying the gospel is. And if you can't explain how it fits in, then you've got to admit that you don't know what the gospel is. And you should be asking more questions. I'm saying that's what you should be saying to this person. You should be asking more questions rather than going around proclaiming that you know what the gospel is when I just throw one verse at you and you can't even explain it. You try to run away like you're a coward. You're all a bunch of cowards. Every verse that I put that out there at you, you run away from. Oh, well, what about this? Oh, well, what about that? Well, what about this? And you know, for a long time, I entertained that kind of behavior, and I went ahead and addressed the verses that you brought up. 
No more. No more what ifs. If you what if on me, I'm going to call you a pagan Christian. You do not believe that this is the testimony of God. You're a liar. I don't need to read it again. Revelation 21.8. Cowardly and all liars will be thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, the second death. So that's how you treat those people. They're an abomination in God's nose. The word abomination literally means a stench of death, like a dead animal. That's what they are to the Lord. Treat them like that. They're still human beings made in the image of God, so you have to respect them on some level, of course. But that abomination that is in them needs to be handled. And it needs to be called what it is. You do not believe that this is the testimony of God. You are a coward and you're a liar. You're running away. You don't know what you're talking about. You're going around lying, saying that you do. That's how you handle them. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.